Okay, Let, let's start bringing in some of the other computers now. All right, so remember, we, we have a mini hack here. We, we have this mini hack topology. Maybe I'll pop open our external just to uh, revisit what, what's the topology that we're currently, currently working with right now. It's like, okay, so let's go to type in our password here and say, all right, so everything I've been configuring so far has been on the internal server here in Ubuntu. That, that's, that's where ever, all the action has been happening. It's like, well, what if I wanted some other computer to use this? What, what if I want my other computer, like my Kali computer? I've got an internal Kali computer. What if I want my internal Kali computer to use the DNS server that I just set up here on my Ubuntu machine? It's like, well, I could go to the resolve.conf inside my internal Kali computer, add it to the list, and then it will make requests against this. So if I switch over to the internal Kali device and see that th this, this one, remember, we configured last time to go and interact with our SSH server, currently located at 192.168.8.100, if it wants to make requests against the DNS server that we set up before, remember, we just need that resolve.com file. Um, so let's go ahead and add that uh, name server uh, uh, list, just like we did on the Ubuntu side. We'll add it here to the Kali side as well. So I'll do something like a sudo nano slash etc slash resolve.conf, right? Just like that. And of course, the only line that we really need inside this file is one that says name server space, and then what's the DNS server that we want to use? I'm going to use 192.168.8.2. That's the location where my DNS server is currently located. We'll do a control X, Y, enter on that. Okay. And so hopefully now if I open up a browser and say, all right, I'd like to try to visit some domain, right? Something Something like www.ncaecybergames, ncaecybergames.org. It will go to my resolve.com file, see the DNS server that's located in there, and ask the DNS server, can you please resolve this request? Let's hit enter and hope, cross fingers crossed, and say, hey, look at that. All right, so now it was able to use the DNS server to resolve, well, where is ncaecybergames.org? And we told the DNS server... Well, go to this IP address, right? And so that, that's what the browser did. The browser went to the IP address that the DNS server told it to, all right? So nice, now, now this DNS server cannot just resolve requests for itself, but other computers on the network could also query the DNS server for, uh, for results. Now, right now, our results are really limited, right? We kind of told everyone else, like, well, you can come here and we'll resolve www for you, which is nice, right? We only really have one simple web page that's running, so, you know, what do you really expect from this DNS server? But this is where you'd have to go through and start adding in other entries if you want your DNS server to resolve things other than www. Um, why don't we actually try that? Why don't we actually try a little bit more complex example where, when let, let's think about our topology here. When we've got our DNS server, right now it's resolving www.ncae cyber games to be the internal web server. Effectively, it's, it's resolving to itself. Okay, it'll tell anyone else who asks it, this is where you want to go. Well, what if we added an entry that could actually resolve another web page that's running? And we do have another web page that's running, and that's, that's of course, this one. That's the scoreboard. The scoreboard that I'm visiting right now, this scoring server, this is running a web page. I have it open right now in my external Kali machine. That's what I'm visiting right here. Well, we could program our DNS server to say, how about if anybody tries going to score.ncaecybergames.org, they'll get redirected to this IP address, the 172.20.0.1. So 172.20.0.1 is also running a web page. We could tell our DNS server if anybody requests score.dns or score.ncaecybergames.org, they'll get redirected to this IP address. All right, let's give it a try. Let's go back to our Ubuntu machine and let's see which files do I have to modify to make this happen. Well, I'm definitely going to have to modify the forward. If anybody requests www.ncaecybergames.org, we have a file that does that. That's the forward lookup file, right? What I want us to be able to resolve now, of course, is what if they did score.ncaecybergames.org. All right, so let's see what we got. I'm going to go into that file. Remember, we're going to use a sudo, and then this was inside the zones folder, right? Slash etc, slash bind, slash zones, and then the forward. This forward lookup. Oh, let, let's use nano. I'm forgetting my nano, sudo, nano zone slash forward yep this is the one all right we'll type out our password here of password and say okay i'm about to make a change to this file what do i want to do if i'm going to make a change to this file i need to increment the serial number i'm going to make a change to this file let's change the serial number from two to three 
Sure, just, hey, this will indicate that this is a new change. And I want to add another entry to the list. I want score to be a new subdomain that will actually resolve. So where do I want it to be? It's like, well, score, it's going to be an, uh, an A record. So I'll say in uh, space A. And then the IP address that I want score.ncacybergames.org to resolve to will be, well, it's not going to be a 192 anymore. It's going to be that 172.20.0.1. That's the IP address that I want to resolve if anybody asks me to go to score.ncaecybergames.org. Yeah, sure. Let's go ahead and save that. Control X, Y, enter. Okay. So that will resolve anybody who visits our server, asks our server to say, hey, can you tell me where score.ncaecybergames.org is? It should be able to resolve to now the 172. Maybe, maybe we'll give it a try. We'll try it with the NS lookup, right? NS lookup of score.ncaecybergames.org. And we'll be able to see, hmm, can't find it. Why not? Well, we made a change, of course. We didn't restart our service. Let's go ahead and restart the service now. We'll do a sudo system ctl restart name d. We made a change to our service. Let's try restarting our service. And let's see if we can now go through and give it a second here. Many times it'll restart right away. We've got our score.ncaecybergames.org. Okay, it finally went and restarted. Now let's try doing that NS lookup that I just typed a moment ago of score.ncaecybergames.org. Hey, there we go. So it queried the server at 192.168.8.2, and that responded with 172.20.0.1. Let's see if it actually works. Let's see if it works in a browser. So if I go to score.ncaecybergames.org, it should query the server and get that 172.20 address as the response. And it gives us this warning like, hey, you've been redirected to an HTTPS website that has a self-signed certificate. And actually, that, that's okay. That actually is what's running at the scoreboard. Because remember, when you get to the scoreboard, you have to log in. And of course, there's no, uh, there's no HTTPS cert uh, that, that, that's currently uh, validly available um, while it's all running here in the isolated uh, mini hack. So in other words, you can go to advanced and say accept the risk and continue, and it will work. And then you'll get the scoreboard, right? You'd have to go log into the scoreboard with the credentials that we've been using. We've been using sandbox and password to be able to get into the scoreboard. But it's like, hey, here, here's that same mini hack topology. But this time the browser was able to find it without going to the IP address. It went to score.ncaecybergames.org. That's how it made its way out to this particular address out here. So you could go to it directly from the IP address, but now... The DNS server also knows how to resolve this IP or resolve this domain name request to find the IP address in that sense as well. Um, what if we wanted the reverse lookup to work? Ah, that this this one's going to get trickier. What if I wanted the reverse lookup to also be able to answer this question? So remember, the idea with a reverse lookup is: what if somebody came to me with the IP address? In this case, 172.20.0.1. We might want to be able to tell that individual, we want to tell that client that that is associated with score.ncaecybergames.org. The tricky part about this one, though, is when we look at our configuration files, right, and the configuration file that we're really interested in this particular case is going to be the name.d.conf uh, uh, and then the default-zones file. This, this is the one we're really interested in here when we do this. You'll notice we want to do a reverse lookup. In other words, someone's going to come to us with an IP address, and the IP address that they're going to come to us with is 172.20.0.1. And when our bind server looks down the list, it's going to say, I don't actually have an entry for the 172.20 network. That's not something I have an entry for. I have an entry for the 192.168 network. 192.168.8, but I don't have an entry for the 172.20 network. So if you want to be able to add in a reverse lookup, we're going to have to make changes to the name d.conf.defaultzones file in addition to making a change to the reverse lookup file. Let's give it a try. All right, so we'll do this with a sudo nano name d.conf.default-zones. Okay, sure. So what we want to do is we actually we want to add in another zone that will be able to govern 
But what if somebody makes a request, not looking at the 192.168.8 network, but actually they're going to be looking at the 172.20 network. So let's add, a, let's add another zone spot here. We'll add another block of code for this zone. We'll say the zone is, write the IP address in reverse order, only listing the network information. All right, we want that 172.20.0.1, that's the address, but the network information is, it's a slash 16, right, a 255.255.0.0, which means it's only the first two numbers, the 172.20, but we're writing it in reverse order. So I'm going to write 20.172, then dot .in dash ADDR dot ARPA. Close the quote, space in space open parenthesis op open curly brace rather all right so that's the line that we're going to enter so if anybody queries 172.20 this particular record is going to trigger okay let's go ahead and kind of copy the information just like we had above we'll still have type as a master record right the file where we're going to get this information from actually let's use the same file as the reverse file you you can list both of these in that reverse.ncaecybergames.org. We've kind of set our files up so that they're they're really by domain. So we could add the score.ncaecybergames to both the forward and the reverse files that already exist. But because it's a different network, we had to add that, that different network to this particular file. So we'll still keep the same information right as above. The file is in inside quotes slash etc slash bind slash zones slash reverse.ncaecyber games.org close the quotes semicolon and then onto the last line we'll say allow dash update space put in our curly braces i'll just put none semicolon space close the curly bracket close the, with the semicolon onto the last line to close this zone block with a with a curly brace and finally end it all with a semicolon so I've pretty much duplicated the line right above this, the block right above this, but I, I'm acknowledging that this is a different network lookup. So this is the 192.168.8 network lookup. Here I'm doing the 172.20 network lookup. And I'm going to add it to the reverse.ncaecybergames.org file. Okay, let's save it. Control X, Y, enter. We'll save that. And now we can go make our change to that reverse lookup file. We'll do a sudo nano inside slash etc slash bind slash zones slash reverse dot uh, uh, ncae cybergames.org. We're about to make a change to this file. Let's go ahead and increment that serial number. All right, right now, before we forget, I'm going to change the serial number right now from two to a three. Okay, so I want to add in another entry. I want to add in another entry, and I want this to resolve to score dot ncae cybergames.org. Someone's going to come to me with the host information of 172.20.0.1. That's, that's the IP address that they're going to come to me with. And I need to take that information and write it in reverse order. So the IP address written in reverse order, remember, would be 1.0.20.172, right? 172.20.0.1. But I've already got the 172.20 part. That's the part that's already in the other file. So I don't need the 172.20 part. I only need the 0.1 part, right? I'm taking the host information for this and I'm writing it in reverse order. Before it was only one octet, so it was just dot two. Now it's the dot one part and the dot zero part. That's the parts that are listed in this file, but they're listed backwards. Okay, so we could do the 1.0, we'll still say it's the same type of record, in space PTR, um, and then the last piece of information that we're going to put in this file is to say, well, what, what's the domain that's associated with this? And that, of course, is score.ncaecybergames.org, period. So if somebody comes looking up and say, hey, can you please resolve 172.20.0.1, we'll tell them that's associated with score.ncaecybergames.org. Okay, hopefully we made all our changes correctly to do the reverse lookup. The reverse lookups can be a little bit trickier, especially as your reverse lookups start going to different networks. As they start going to different networks, you got to write those networks in the correct reverse order. Especially as you start getting things outside of a simple class C, where you get class Bs or class As, you got to pay attention to which information is in this file, which information is in the default uh, uh, zones file. All right, let's save this. We'll do a control X, Y, enter. Let's try restarting our service, right? We'll do a sudo systemctl 
restart name D. Okay, hey, that restarted right away. That's great. Now let's see, can we do a lookup, right? I'll do an NS lookup. And this time I'll do the lookup on 172.20.0.1. Can you tell me, is there a domain associated with this? And it goes and tells us right away, the domain associated with this in reverse order is score.ncaecybergames.org. All right, so now any of our other websites, they'd be able to query this for the IP address for the reverse lookup. They'd also be able to query this for the forward lookup, just like what a browser would do when we're typing uh, domain names inside a browser. <laughs>